In this video, you're going to learn how to graph the parabola in the three most important forms, this general form here, the vertex form, and the intercept form. And we're going to do one problem of each. I'm going to give you some tips and techniques how to work with each form to graph it quickly. So let's dive into the first example. We've got this quadratic here that uh, represents a parabola when you graph it. And you can see that it's in this form here where everything's multiplied out and it's in descending order. So the coefficients in front of the variables here, a, b, and then this constant here, c, are what we're gonna take a look at. And so in order to find the vertex, that's the point where the parabola bends or changes direction like this or like this, we use a formula and you wanna memorize this, it's x equals the opposite of b divided by 2a. So in this case, this is going to be our b value. So negative times 4 is going to give us negative 4 over 2 times a, which is negative 2. That's negative 4 over negative 4, which is 1. So what that 1 represents, it's our axis of symmetry. It's also the x-coordinate of our vertex. So if we go over here to x equals 1, we can draw a dashed or dotted line. That line is what's going to divide our parabola in half. If we fold it over, that line is going to match with itself. Now to find the y-coordinate, we take this x value and we plug it back in for x and then we can solve for that y-coordinate of our vertex. So let's go ahead and do that. So y equals negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 1. Make sure to do the order of operations, parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication. So 1 squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 4 times 1 is 4. So if we combine these together, we get 2 plus 1, which is 3. And so that's going to be the y-coordinate of our vertex. So right 1, up 3. Now, one quick thing that you can do is that this c value right here is going to give us the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. So in this case, c is equal to 1. That means it's going to cross right here at 1. We can fold it over that axis of symmetry to get another point, and then you can draw, draw your graph. Now notice that the a value is negative. That tells us the graph is opening down. The 2 is stretching it, which is going to make the graph narrower. Sometimes what students like to do when they're doing these problems is they like to make a table. Okay, and this is another way to approach this. If you take the vertex and you put it here in the middle, 1, 3, and you pick some points on either side of this axis of symmetry, for example, 0 and 2, and maybe negative 1 and 3. So what I'm doing is I'm going 1 to the left, 1 to the right, or I'm going 2 to the left, 2 to the right. And in this case, we already found this point that was 1 on either side. So let's go maybe to, let's say, a, a negative 1. So if we plug negative 1 in, let's see what we get. We get negative 1 squared, which is 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, so if we combine these together, we get negative 5. That means that over here at 3, it's also going to be negative 5. So let's go ahead and plot that like this. Okay, now we have a pretty good sketch. We've got five points. You can usually get a good graph with five points. Now, there is a shortcut method that some students like to do, and I want to show you that method in case you're a more advanced student. And what you can do is you can focus in on the parent function, y equals x squared. If you were to make a table, see, when you put 0 in, you get 0. When you put 1 in, 1 squared is 1. When you put 2 in, 2 squared is 4. If you put 3 in, 3 squared is 9. That's our parent function. But if you focus in on just this part right here, the y equals ax squared, after you find the vertex using this negative b over 2a, this will give you an idea of how to find the other points quickly. If you notice that this is a vertical stretch and the a value is negative, that means the parabola is going to open down. But instead of working with x squared here, let's focus on y equals negative 2x squared. If I multiply these y values by negative 2, what I can do is I can treat this point like it's the origin, 0, 0, right 1, down 2, see that point here? Or I could go uh, right 2, down 8, and that's this point right here. Or I could go left 1, down 2, left 2, down 8, because it's symmetrical. So that's a quick way to do it. Or you can use the table, but you're going to want to use this negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, and then plug it back in to get the y-coordinate. So that's working with this general form, or sometimes referred to as the standard form. So next, let's talk about how to work with the graph when it's in the vertex form. Okay, for our second example, working with the vertex form, we want to focus in on this h and k. That's going to be the vertex, the point where the parabola bends. And so in this case, the vertex is going to be at negative 1, negative 2. Notice that the one that's grouped with the x, it has the opposite sign. If this was minus 1, then this would be plus 1. 
the k value is going to have the same sign. If it's negative, it's negative. If it's positive, it's positive. That's an important point. So let's go ahead and graph that. Negative 1, negative 2, that's our vertex. Our axis of symmetry goes right through that point. And what we can do now is we can pick some points on either side of that axis of symmetry and fold it over to get an additional point. So what we can do is we can go ahead and put this vertex in the middle of our table. This is one way to do it. Pick some points on either side, so maybe negative 2 and 0 or negative 3 and 1. If we plug in 0, we've got 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3, minus 2 is 1. Make sure to follow that PEMDAS, that order of operations, otherwise you get a different answer. But if this is 1, this is also 1 because it's symmetric. So let's go ahead and plot that. So 0, uh, 1 would be right here. Fold it over the line of symmetry. There's another point. If we plug 1 in, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, times 3 is 12, minus 2 is 10. So that is an additional point, we can go right one up 10 way up here, or over here it's going to be 10. So you can see this is being stretched quite a bit, and that's because this a value is 3, you know, it's stretching it by a factor of 3. So our graph now is going to look something, oops, something like this, U-shape, kind of round it out a little bit there. And another way to do this, if you're, like I said, a more advanced student, is you can focus in on the parent function, y equals x squared, Look at this a value, this 3, it's similar to the a value we were talking about in the last problem, right? And that's stretching it by a factor of 3. So by multiplying these y values by 3, I can say, all right, when I go from the vertex right 1, up 3, there's a point, reflect it over. Or if I go right 2, up 12, that's another point, you can reflect it over. So that's a quick way to get some points on your graph without having to do a table or do a lot of substitution. You can just zero in on using the vertex, and then using you know, this a value. That's going to be your stretch or shrink or reflect. So let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do the last uh, type of problem involving the intercept form. For number three, notice that this intercept form is what we call like a factored form. So when it's in this factored form, by setting these factors or these groups equal to zero, we can find the x-intercepts. So what you do is you just take this group, make a little mini equation, set it to zero, same thing with this factor, set it to zero. If I subtract one from both sides, you can see that x equals negative one, which means it crosses the x-axis right here. And if I add three to both sides, it crosses the x-axis over here at positive three. Now what you want to do is you want to find the axis of symmetry. That's the line that divides that parabola in half. And one way to do this is you can average these two x-intercepts by adding them together and dividing by two. That's your midpoint formula. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and so you can see here right at x equals 1, that's going to be our axis of symmetry. The other way to do it is you can just count. So you can say, okay, 1, 1, 2, 2, you know, you can count to the middle like that, okay? But a lot of times people just like to have a formula, so you add them up and divide by 2. Now the vertex is going to lie on that axis of symmetry. So by taking 1 and plugging it back in for x, we can solve for the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have negative 4. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So let's see, that comes out to negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. So our vertex here is going to be at 1, 16. So that's actually way up here. Okay, hey, let's just label it 1, 16. Now, what we can do is we can plot some additional points. Uh, one good point is to pick close to the axis of symmetry. For example, if I put 0 in, let's see what we get. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Times negative 4 is positive 12. So over here at 0, you're going to be up here at 12. Okay, and if I reflect it over, that's also going to be at 12. So those are a couple other points. This one's kind of going off our graph a little bit. But you can see it's looking something like this. And that's your graph. So that's a quick way of doing it when it's in the intercept form. Now the shortcut method is going back to the parent function, y equals x squared, and notice this a value. It's the same as this a value, this a value, and that negative 4 is stretching the graph. It's also reflecting the graph, which makes it open down. And so what I can do is I can multiply all these y values by negative 4. And so what I can do is I can treat this vertex like it's the origin, if I go right 1, I would go down 4. So you can see 16 minus 4 is 12. That's what we got you know, for these points. 
And if I was to go right to, I would go down 16, which you can see that's right on the x-axis, same thing here. So that's a quick way to just work from the vertex using the, you know, the parent function, this uh, ax squared uh, function. So great job if you're able to follow these three different types that are important to know. There's also a fourth type. I'll link to that video at the end here if you want to learn how to work with the focus and the directrix. And lastly, if you enjoy the way that I teach and you want to take my math courses or get access to my midterm and final exam reviews or my ACT and SAT prep videos and more, become a member at the additional videos level, join the channel, and I'll see you over in that membership uh, section. I'll see you in the next video.